Uh-huh. 
and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk upon it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as we pray the psalm found in your answer. Psalm 29. Describe to the Lord, you gods. Describe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon sit like a cat, and not grown like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The, the voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise, and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all were crying, Glory! The Lord sits in grown above the blood. The Lord sits in throne and is king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Our second reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all people but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, 
who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my God. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Amen. So I don't know how it is at, uh, at your home, but uh, Christmas is over. <laughs> the Christmas tree is put away, all decorations, uh, Christmas lights are off the front of the house, and even at, here at St. John's, uh, the only remnant uh, that we even had Christmas or the uh, uh, crash is still up. The wise men came uh, on Epiphany as usual, and even Wally, the wayward camel, uh, showed up uh, eventually. And uh, and the, but you know it'll go away here pretty soon. And so we are focusing not now on this uh, infant child, uh, but now we're back to uh, focusing on Jesus as an adult. Uh, the only story in the Bible of Jesus from his birth to uh, adulthood is uh, the that brief story in Luke where Jesus is 12 years old and uh, in the temple it is what we today would call Bar Mitzvah. And um, so this is kind of this shift from this infant Jesus at Christmas time to now Jesus being baptized. Is, is falling at this time of year is after Christmas is okay now everything is put away it's time to get back to a somewhat uh, normal life uh, get back into our routines if, if possible even at all uh, given ongoing situations so we our gospel uh, that is always on the first Sunday after the epiphany is the baptism of Jesus. It's this year, year A is uh, Matthew, next year will be Mark, and then Luke is always in the third year. And so those stories uh, keep coming up. So in a sense, it's kind of a, it's one of what I call bookend. Uh, so the first Sunday is always the baptism, the last Sunday of Epiphany is always the transfiguration of Jesus. And then we have uh, bunch of stories. We get back to green season again, uh, beginning next week. But focusing on this baptism of Jesus, it has some theological issues with it. Mainly, why was Jesus baptized in the first place? If, 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 as in our minds, we think uh, uh, baptism as being baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and uh, for uh, the the light of Christ coming within us, receiving the Holy Spirit, and then going forth and living this Christ-like life. But we're told that Jesus lived a perfect life. He lived a sinless life and had to die on the cross, sinless, uh, to be an example for us. But so, like I said, our understanding is that we were baptized for the forgiveness of our sins, but he didn't necessarily need that. His baptism was, was more of what I would call an inauguration or a consecration, a commissioning, if you even will. The beginning of God saying, okay, now it's time to, uh, for you to go about doing your ministries, which eventually leads to his death on the cross and his resurrection. It's a, almost like a rite of passage uh, that this, this prince or that was born king of this baby, that was born king of the Jews, and proclaimed by the Magi or the wise men, is now taking that responsibility upon himself and taking that power and that authority upon him. He is, is anointed um, by the Holy Spirit, but my, in my thinking, in my theology, and in our Nicene Creed, that that Holy Spirit is with God and is with the Son is always there. So it's that Holy Spirit, when it says the Holy Spirit coming upon him, is just a reaffirmation that it was already there in the first place and for him to take hold of it and use it as a tool. Also, Jesus' baptism is a fulfillment of what we heard in Isaiah and that in our first reading from Isaiah that uh, God says that my servant shall be anointed and 
can do uh, the ministries that I have called it to do. But in this reading, we can see three different interpretations or three different meanings within this reading from Isaiah. First of all, that the servant at the time that when Isaiah was writing this was, was the servant of Israel, that God was calling Israel to be a servant of God and to do the work of God. But then we also uh, look upon that and we see that in this day and age that Jesus is that servant uh, incarnate. But also that we are servants as well, that in this, that we are called to be the servants to do that same ministry. This particular reading of Isaiah, for those of you that haven't been around in a while, that uh, biblical scholars, they break up the book of Isaiah into three different writers. That uh, chapters 1 through 39 are the actual Isaiah from back in the uh, 720s or uh, however BC. And then the second one is chapter 40 through 55, and then 56 uh, through 66, the end is the third Isaiah. So this actually falls within that second Isaiah. And second Isaiah is writing to the Jewish people and the Israelites who are in the Babylonian exile, in captivity. And just one of the things that Jeremiah had told them even before they went into exile was that they needed to go, go boldly into the exile to build houses, plant vineyards, raise families, basically go there, get comfortable until God calls you back. And, but to also be an influence. So second Isaiah is also looking back at what Jeremiah is saying and also adding on to that and saying, don't just say, woe is me in the exile, but get busy. God is calling you to a ministry among these people to be, uh, to be a good example, to, uh, to, to do the things. We have uh, Daniel as an example. We have Esther as an example of those people who are in exile in uh, Babylon who, um, who did good ministry. In a sense, we are free, and yet we are captives ourselves. That through our baptism, that we are free from sin, and most of all, we are free from death. We're not necessarily totally free from sin, but we're free from the punishment of sin through Jesus Christ. But we're captives. We're still enslaved within a broken and sinful world ourselves. But like Israel, that in our baptism, that we are commissioned. And as, our, um, as I read in the, uh, the opening college or the college for this particular Sunday, that through our baptism, that we are called to be faithful to our covenant. What is that covenant? That is our baptismal covenant, that we say that we will uh, carry on the work of the apostles, that we'll break bread and uh, be faithful in our prayers, that we will seek justice, that we will respect the dignity of every human being, and seek and serve Christ and all people. These are the things that when we are baptized that we, and, and they were confirmed that we are called to do. That's our commissioning as well. So just as Jesus was baptized and said, God said, okay, now it's time for you to do your ministry. It's time for us to do that as well. So as we think about this new year, and we always have a new year, that uh, we, we make resolutions or we try to maybe think about and plan out how this year is going to go. Of course, the minute, as they say, often say, in wartime, the plan is great until first shots fired, uh, and then things go awry. And that's true of a lot of our New Year's resolutions and our plans for a happy and wonderful and healthy New Year, that if the plan is great until we reach the first adversity. But we have Jesus to fall back on. Uh, in faith and hope in him. And I hope that in your lives that you are thinking about uh, 
and asking yourself multiple questions of uh, how am I going to be more faithful to Christ in this coming year? How am I going to be more active in carrying on his ministry or to continue being active if you already are? And how can you be a light of the world? January is the time that uh, it is the season for committee meetings in the church. And uh, starting this week with a worship committee meeting and then next Sunday outreach and then eventually we'll have our, uh, we'll, uh, our annual meeting and education meeting. And, and, uh, but my hope is that even when the vestry meets and the, vet, the, and the new vestry meets and retreat, that we will keep these same questions in our mind as well. That do our ministries promote Christian living? And do they promote righteousness? Do they promote our servanthood? Do, or do we take on that servanthood like Jesus and Israel was called to be servants? Do, are we able to go out uh, into the world and proclaim individually uh, that uh, we are servants of God? and that we serve Christ in our community. And also, uh, as a church, are we recognized as a light to the world? Are we a light in our community? And I think there's a lot of hope for that. Um, for those of you who are not privy, um, I, I've been waiting forever to hear from the State Department of Children's Services, and it looks like uh, that we will get our agreement and our document. So I'm looking forward this year to us having a ministry of our own in helping children in our house next door and in that sense being a light to the world. But I hope that in all that we do, that we are a light to the world and that we are continuing on the work that Jesus began at his baptism at the River Jordan. Amen. Amen. stand and confess our faith in the words of the Ninth Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, He God not made, of one being with the Father, Thank you. 
pray this week for the church of the province of Myanmar in the Anglican cycle of prayer. And we pray for St. Peter's, Lebanon, the Reverend Christopher Beasley in the diocesan cycle of prayer. We also offer prayers for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Brasilia and their Bishop Mauricio, and for our partnership with San Andres Catan in the Episcopal Diocese of Haiti. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for those who are ill, Grant McLaughlin and Quincy Fitzgerald. We also pray for those who have special needs, the Sobeks, the Lange family, Ron Stover, for Nick, for Susan Goodman. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for the birthdays of Jill and Olivia Burton. We also give thanks for the Outreach, outreach Committee of St. John's and all the members who serve and provide succor to those in need of our community. Give thanks for my daughters, my wife, my grandson. For being able to have all my family together for Christmas. For safe travels. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We especially pray today for Donald Trump. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Put their, their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, we not know. Things done and left undone. And so hold us by your spirit. mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
so um, and uh, making uh, white chili uh, for soup and so uh, then uh, Thursday um, kind of we haven't had a real worship committee meeting since like 2018 um, but uh, you know and, and we've kind of radically changed <laughs> since COVID uh, so uh, and trying to get back to normal so I encourage anyone who wants to uh, provide input uh, to come uh, to the meeting. There's also will be a Zoom option for that uh, if you just want to uh, come in on the Zoom on that. So, uh, is there any other announcements? That, yes. If anybody has Christmas cards they want to recycle, I will take them to use for the next year's Christmas series. For Christmas on the River program. Christmas on the River. So I, I will take them and recycle them. Let us with gladness offer our life and oblations to the Lord. <laughs> generation 
who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. 
Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be God.